A widely publicized story by Rolling Stone magazine about a sexual assault at the University of Virginia led to a temporary shutdown of the campus fraternities. But after the Washington Post reported discrepancies in that story, Rolling Stone published a letter saying they had misplaced trust in the story's main source. Joining me with some answers some questions raised by the fallout from this story are Jeffrey Buckolds, president of the San Diego Domestic Violence Council, and Laura Wingard, KPBS News and digital editor. Welcome to the show. Hi. Now, Jeff, what kind of fallout can a, a high profile story like this and the backlash from it have on the victims of sexual assault? Well, I think in any case like this where, where, peop, where the our culture is kind of casting doubt on one person's story. There's a trickle effect onto all survivors, and the and the effect is is absolutely devastating. Uh, if we want to end the epidemic of sexual assault and domestic violence and stalking in our communities, we have one option and one option only, and that is to find a way to believe victims when they come forward and be supportive of them through the process uh, as they try to figure out how to heal. And Laura, remind us of the major discrepancies between the Rolling Stone story and what Washington Post discovered. There's a, a lot of things have come out. Some are saying that how they met. Uh, she said that it occurred at a, when they were lifeguards at a university pool. The fraternity is now saying there was no uh, member of their fraternity who was a lifeguard. Um, there's uh, friends of the victim are now saying, uh, oh, well, she told me it was five people that attacked versus seven people. Um, there's different things about whether the fraternity had a party that night, did they not have a party, those kinds of so things. So real specific details. Now, um, Jeff, the, the Rolling Stone, of course, as I said, they actually wrote a letter, a couple of letters actually, saying that their, their trust in the source had been misplaced, uh, it wasn't a full out apology. What's your reaction to uh, how they handled their story being discredited? Uh, I think my first reaction is that the way that they wrote that is very vic is very victim blamey in it, in and of itself, right? To say that they misplaced trust in her rather than they they failed to report more accurately on a story, um, and I, I think that that is a kind of a an, an embarrassment and a kind of a shameful thing to do. Uh, I, I think that generally speaking, the the problem we have is that is that victims don't feel supported coming forward in the first place. And so when, when Rolling Stone runs this piece, which is about one story on one campus, not about the epidemic we have in the country as a whole, um, that there's a, a point of, of concern for, for uh, Broadening Every, it out? Yeah, broadening it mm -hmm. out to everyone else in the community and also kind of just this idea that if that if one survivor's story doesn't meet some level of accuracy that none of us are able to figure out from what's going on. And by the way, no one has ever said, no one has denied that she was sexually assaulted, which I think is kind of important to point mm -hmm. out. But then instead of kind of adjudicating this at home, I think every person in their, ho in their home right now can ask a more important question, which is how can I figure out how to be supportive and not blame victims because overwhelmingly they are not lying. Okay, and Laura, um, reporting on a, a sensitive subject like sexual assault can be a real balancing act for a reporter when it comes to trying to protect uh, the victim so they're not further traumatized, but also not accusing somebody if they haven't had their, their justice due. So uh, what's the best way to handle that? Well, I think that reporters work in concert with their editors. I think a lot of people are calling Rolling Stone into doubt, not just this reporter, but what were their editors doing? Um, we recently had a situation where Angela Carone, one of our reporters, wrote about um, uh, a, a woman's assault that happened at San Diego State. It happened several years ago. Um, in doing that reporting, we really weighed a lot of things, and very differently than this case from the University of Virginia, this woman had, she filed a police report. We obtained a copy of that police report. Um, she had sought a temporary restraining order and received it from the courts. We had a copy of that. We had um, information that led you to believe, yes, this assault was being taken seriously by the authorities and being investigated. They didn't bring charges. Um, in the criminal system, but it did go through the, the campus judicial process. So you had a uh, backup, you verified like uh, reporters would do their due do, do, uh, diligence. And they also, Angela, I understand, also reached out to the perpetrator, the accused. Right, uh, and that's one of the things that's come into question in Rolling Stone is they apparently made an agreement to not contact 
um, the, the, the lead perpetrator, I guess. Okay, and Jeff, um, so now uh, over the weekend, I've read that, you know, Jackie, the name of the person who, uh, the, who is accusing uh, this rape, um, or alleging this rape, I should say, her name and her photograph have been published. Um, what do you think about that? I think that's about as unethical a thing as it, and, and thoughtless a thing as a person can do. Um, the reason that, that we keep victims' names, you know, that mo or I say we, most news organizations keep victims' names um, and, and don't use their real names and don't, and don't let information about them out is because this is something that blows up in their life, right? That, that uh, you don't need all of your family and friends and everyone who's ever met you, every future job employer who's gonna do a Google search of your name finding out that you're a rape victim. I mean, this is, this is a, a woman's life, and, and she had the courage to come forward and talk about what her experience was, and if her memory recall isn't perfect of that, uh, of course it's not. She was in a, a brutal sexual assault, and we know that, that's, that, that that changes the way the memory works, but that more importantly, the, the, the effects on her of, of her name being released can be devastating. All right, we have to end it there. Jeff Buckles and Laura Wingard, thank you so much. My pleasure.